Hey, I'm going to summarize my Android MDM research in this video. Um, yeah, I created a document that describes all of this, but yeah, I think video might be handy. Also, I'm going to show some like POC that I created that might be helpful during implementation. So um, I think, yeah, it all starts with this uh, documentation, Android Management API that's linked in the doc. So they have, um, yeah, like some developer's guide here. They have some quick start, but yeah, like I mostly followed this one and they have reference for like different endpoints that can be used uh, within this and uh, API. So uh, there is, yeah, like the first thing first is uh, like MDM solution must create like cloud project in the Google cloud. Uh, and then that project is like, I think sort of base. So it's uh, like this API, um, most APIs are asking you for this project ID so you can use it. And then, uh, yeah, the thing is also I forgot to mention, but uh, what what's uh, important is like this API is limited. So there's like also API quota, like it's, I think, 500 registered devices uh, and this can, this can increase but what they do uh, is actually they have some like EMM community that uh, you as a developer need to join and then uh, you need like to pass some review um, in order to like release commercial solution and then it appears in their like enterprise solution directory uh, so this directory is basically like yeah a lot of companies are listed in here um so that's it but i think uh what is good is like we can develop and uh, start working on it and then i think once we have it we can just um try to pass this review and like uh apply for it and then try yeah try to get this like increased api limits because um yeah i think it's meant like in order to be commercial solution you need to kind of be in this list um yeah so also they have um yeah I'll, I'll talk about this one as well and then i'll jump to a little bit into this poc i built so there are a couple of solution sets or sort of management use cases that they uh defined so it's like work profile for employee owned devices which is byod so basically it splits your device into kind of two partitions like one is your personal data and apps and then you have uh, work related stuff and then there is similar thing for work profile but for company owned devices uh, the difference here is like even though you know a company allows you like personal usage uh, they have a bit more um, options so they can like do some device wide uh, restrictions and stuff that they cannot do for employee owned devices or byod devices uh, and then there is fully managed, which is like, uh, basically, yeah, there is no, like, they don't enable, like, personal usage. So it's, like, just work-related stuff and uh, dedicated devices. It's, like, basically kiosk devices. So you could say, okay, those devices can just run one application or more applications that you define. And then, uh, yeah, uh, for these three, uh, like, these cannot be enrolled, uh, they, they can be only enrolled like if if device factory reset so like that's the way and there's i think fifth but i didn't cover this one and it's zero touch enrollment which is similar to apple business manager flow so you have some like portal enterprise portal and google like the google provides and then you have some like resellers that are authorized to sell uh those zero touch devices and then when devices appear there you can you can set some predefined configurations and then whenever they reach the when, whenever like user unpack that device connect to the internet they will um, join like to your or they will just enroll into your mdm that's defined in that portal uh yeah so why i'm showing this i think it's important because like in order to release solution to this like directory you need to have it cover like at least one of these uh, they have like some required features that you must must uh, have in order to be allowed to release. I think good thing is like 
when we build this like low level management solution for restoration, we'll probably cover most of these like requirements that I've uh, defined in this section down there. But yeah, um, now I'll, I'll jump to back to the documentation uh, for this API and then just show what it takes to like be like MDM solution for Android devices. So basically I like Fleet will need some service account for and uh, Google project. After that, there is some, yeah, like it's called enterprise binding. So this is a uh, part where um, like organizations connect their Android enterprise to your solution in this case fleet. So um, I know like at some other solutions, it's like there's some old flow that required admin to get some token from Google and then supply that to like uh, MDM solution. But this is like new one where you get this like URL um, to like sign up URL and then a uh, customer just need to like follow some steps and then everything is uh, done automatically and then it gets connected. And then after that, like, uh, like they, they have so similar to when you connect Apple Business Manager, but it's more like, uh, I guess, user friendly. So I'm going to show this how it looks like. So um, yeah, I built this uh, quick POC basically. Uh, I have, this is just like some authentication stuff that you need for this, like from this service account and uh, project ID from Google Cloud um, that I got. And then, yeah, this is used basically to authenticate for uh, all Google APIs, or in this case, like in this Android management API. So yeah, this is something I set. And then this value is uh, something I'll show now is returned like in this endpoint when creating um, or actually when uh, signing up. So what I did, I just like, uh, this is like some endpoint where you get these sign up URLs. So it asks for two parameters. One is like project ID of this like Google Cloud project. And another one is like callback URL. In this case, I've used my domain. And basically what it does like when user successfully sign up, it, it just appends some query param, like enterprise token uh, to this URL. So like MDM solution can get that and store in database uh, because this enterprise token is necessary in order to create enterprise or to do this binding that I described previously. Um, so yeah, uh, let me show you, I have some video I recorded. So when you get that URL uh, that I've generated, then when you access that URL, you have, this is like how it looks like. So basically like you, you need to type your email address. I think they, um, now they just want you to use like Google workspace or Google for business address, but not like Gmail. Um, and then like, yeah, you just follow these steps. You go to admin console. They ask you to confirm some other steps after you log in. Um, so yeah, like you have like Android enterprise subscription, which is like free. You just need to like confirm that. And after that's done, yeah, it just asks you if you want to manage, this is like my cloud project ID, I think. So, uh, you can write whatever you want here. It could be fleet something. And then after everything is successful, you see, it's just redirected to my like, um, domain or callback URL that I've set. And then in the. On the top, you can see there's enterprise token in that URL. And then, yeah, that token is basically used uh, back here to create, like to bind this in your like MDM solution. So like, uh, yeah, enterprise, enterprise.create. It, it always, I think, asks you for project ID, uh, which is like, yeah, something that comes from MDM solution. And then this sign up URL name, we got this from uh, from here, from this call. Uh, so basically, yeah, that an enterprise token. And then after like enterprise is created, then you can create like policies and stuff like that. Um, so I'll jump in here and there is like this important part, which is uh, after your enterprise is binded to your MDM solution, like then you can provision device, which is done with some, like, there's many ways, but yeah, like basically, I've just created like enrollment token 
and that enrollment token can be used like to type it manually in the settings app or you can just send to the user like um, some URL that basically triggers settings application and then leads you to the flow of like uh, where you just accept some stuff and then it creates work profile. So I have also a video for that one, how it looks like I've just used my Android device and uh, to do this. So basically this is what I'm talking about. So basically there is this enterprise at google.com slash android slash enroll and then this generated enrollment token, which actually by default it, it is I think valid well, for one hour, but yeah, I think it's more like station detail. We'll need to think how we generate these. So this is also pretty handy, like what we can do. Like we could have like some fleet instance.com slash enroll. And then we have our portal, which basically we have button that basically opens this thing um so yeah it's when i open this one on my android phone it immediately leads me to the settings and then it starts downloading things it's just basically some flow where i'll just speed up a little bit um uh, it's kind of wizard where you just click next 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 this thing is just like some samsung like uh software update it shouldn't appear in general uh, and then after this loading, it, it just takes some time loading and, and downloading some stuff. And then after it's successfully done, I'm back in my Gmail app. And then you can see uh, when I open my applications here in the bottom, like there's personal stuff and there's work tab. If you go to work, there are just some apps and then you'll see there's play store which is basically now managed play store it's something like uh self-service like if you open i've defined a discord application in it so you'll see it's only that one so you can't install anything but discord in that work profile so you can define many applications there and all of this is defined with policies which i'll talk uh about a bit later and for example if i i think i tried to open camera here i restricted that so um i don't know where it is but yeah like should be somewhere here if you try to open camera it was restricted so it will just get some like message here but yeah uh, it worked uh, that's one and there is also an option like when creating or sort of binding enterprise i have another example where i've just patched this um enterprise and added like sign in url so what i did is like um basically they allow you to give some url which will be open to sign in and we could use like exiting sso integration and if everything is all right you just redirect to to some url so i'm going to show that video as well um so yeah i've clicked on this one it's starting everything up, doing this like wizard flow. And after some loading, yeah, it basically takes some time. It's pretty much the same, except at some point, yeah, here, it opens Google Chrome. When I open it, uh, yeah, it opens this one, but this is something Angrok related. So it's just like, probably with, wouldn't be visible in real app. And then if I visit this, I've just made like fake login page. So basically if you sign up, this redirects you to like uh, this enterprise at Android slash enroll with some enrollment token that I've created. And then that's way, like you can implement like SO kind of gated uh, enrollment as well. So it works pretty much the same. Yep, it's here. So I'm in work profile. If I open Play Store, there's Discord again. Um, I think, yeah, I tried to open camera, so I just want to show that. Yeah, so security policy restrict use of camera, so you can set. There's many policies that you can set. Um, so that's it. And then there's like, there are policies. So basically, um, policy is one. So here, create policy. So how it works, like each device can have one policy only, and that's 
really like big JSON with many options. Some of them can't work on like BYOD. There is like everything is described in here. But yeah, like uh, one device can have only one policy. So like if you wanna, so it's not like uh, Mac OS where we have a bunch of profiles. Like if we have, if we wanna have concept of profiles, we'll need to like you can slice and like have multiple uh, JSON. Uh, kind of profiles with these settings, but Fleet will need to generate one one big policy out of those based on the scoping, and then apply that to the to the host. But yeah, like we could we could make like similar concept like with with profiles. I think we did similar thing for Windows, and then yeah, that's like everything is done by policies. Even like applications, you define like uh, application IDs or which is basically if you go to Play Store, you can find it in the URL. Uh, and then additionally, uh, what I wanted to show is, yeah, policies. That's pretty much it. Um, the rest, I think, is in the in this document. Yeah, so it's like create policy provision device with this URL. There's a couple of more options like we could generate like QR code, um, or yeah, I think that's that's an option. And I think what is also uh, pretty important is that we can, with this, if we just do this integration, we can cover all of these use cases, like um, except like zero touch that requires some more work. And then yeah, like they can uh do like byod if they want like um to set like some enrollment token for to be like for company owned devices that can be done but yeah like device must be factory reset so you can't like make it company owned like if it's already used i think the reason is some security stuff where uh yeah google doesn't allow you to like make something kind of or make it company uh owned because there might be some uh, stuff already on the device, so they just want to clean device and then it can be company owned or fully managed device or kiosk device. Um, yeah, I described all of the all of these steps I've talked here as well. There's some policies examples, um, and yeah, I've, I've also there's commands. Um, those are just like there's some API uh, endpoint that you can call and then you define, okay, reset password and some like additional params. There's whole documentation in here on how this should work. So I guess what we could do is like uh, use uh, interface we have today and then just like allow users to like uh, craft this JSON for themselves, like based on this documentation, like similar to what we do for Apple and Windows for now. And then later we add some abstracted options, reset password, wipe, and uh, for, yeah, in the UI, there's those like requirements I was talking about. So yeah, for each, like here in develop your solution, uh, they have some yeah, requirements that you must follow. Uh, for each like subset of um, like use cases, so work profile on personally owned devices, which is like BYOD, there are some required stuff that we need to have in order to be like in their directory that they have. So it's and I've just summarized everything in here with what could, what is already covered like when we build this low level and some stuff that I'm not sure and maybe uh, some stuff that I think that need some additional work like app management and stuff like actually app management could be done through these like policies so they can craft JSON stuff but yeah I'm thinking should we prevent that and wait until we build this um, so like folks create like software titles um, and then they distribute apps but this is this is it